C++ classes. Classes are very similar to structures. Although structures can contain both public and private members, most people use classes for more complex situations. Classes are usually declared before the main function and have the general syntax beginning with the keyword class followed by the class name. Inside the brackets of a class, you will find the access specifiers along with their data members. After the closing bracket is a semicolon. Functions inside of a class are often referred to as methods. Although entire function definitions can be included in the class declaration, usually only the function prototype is used. The class member functions are usually defined after the main function. Since these functions are members of the bank account class, they must also include the class name in their definitions. The class name is followed by the scope resolution operator. This allows access to the class. Notice that the first two functions do not have data types. These are called class constructors. Class constructors share the same name as the class, but do not return values. The first constructor is the default constructor and is where the private members of the class are initialized. This is the function that is called when a class object is instantiated. In this example, savings is an object or instance of the bank account class. The default constructor sets the initial value of balance to zero. The second constructor is called the overload constructor. The overload constructor can redefine the values of the private members.
It is called when there is a value to be passed from the bank account object when it is instantiated. In this example, we've instantiated the object called savings from our bank account class. Since the object has a value that needs to be passed, our overload constructor is called. Money is the argument whose value is passed to the class overload constructor. So the value of money is assigned to funds. We initially defined money with a value of 200. So the value 200 is then assigned to funds. Inside the overload constructor, balance is assigned the value that is passed to funds. Therefore, balance is assigned the value 200. Add funds and withdraw funds are public class members and can be accessed from the main function using the dot operator. In this example, we have declared the variable money with a double data type and assigned it the value of 150.25. We've also instantiated the object savings using our bank account class. Our class function or class method add funds alters our private member balance. The initial value of balance is zero because the default constructor was called when savings was instantiated. Here we've called the class method add funds. The value of money is passed to add funds when it is called. Credit is assigned the value of money. Balance is zero because of the default constructor. The function add funds is executed and balance is now assigned the value 150.25. What will balance be after withdrawal funds is called? In this example, we have declared the variable money1 with a double data type and assigned it the value of 300. We've also instantiated the object savings from our bank account class and assigned it the argument money1. Because the object savings has an argument, the overload constructor is called, and the value of money1 is assigned to balance. Now we call the class method withdraw funds with the argument money2.
The value of balance is currently 300 because of the overload constructor. The value of money to, which is 150.25, is passed to withdraw funds and assigned to debit. Balance is now assigned the value of 300 subtract 150.25, which is 149.75. Remember that when declaring private class members, they can only be accessed by function members of the same class. This concludes our section on classes. Next, we will be discussing inheritance.